everybody and welcome back to Welcome Grove Homestead. It has been a little bit since we last posted and part of that is just due to the insanity that is springtime. Uh, we just got pretty much up to our eyeballs and all the work going on and it's pretty hard to drag a camera around with you when you are seriously not stopping from sun up to sun down. So just had to take a little bit of a break, step back just a little bit from uh, YouTube just because we had a lot going on and of course it's great content but at the risk of my sanity <laughs> I had to just take a little bit of a break because I just couldn't make it work to film to edit to get it released so it's unfortunate but it was our first spring and there was a lot to learn and a lot going on so we have learned some lessons we have gained some new faces around here and we've lost a couple of others and uh, so we're gonna try and fill you guys in on everything that has happened but obviously that cannot happen in just a single video because there is just too much so we're gonna try and kind of do it in increments and I think we're gonna start over here at the goat pen over here we have Jane and she had triplet bucklings of course those two are on the outside of the fence because Nigerian babies can melt through the fence <laughs> but Miss Jane's babies this year are named for Wuthering Heights characters and the one slipping through the fence right now is Lockwood the white one over here is Heathcliff and then the little buckskin is Edgar we'll get up close with them here coming up now Jane is an excellent mom she is handling raising three bucklings like it's nothing she is getting her annual baldness <laughs> uh, that is just something that she does every year uh, around this time after kidding she just drops her hair I was hoping that she wasn't going to this year as I hope every year but she did however I do have some success uh, a little victory here over Jane's usual condition after kidding because she has not dropped weight she's still not quite where I want her to be weight wise but she has not gotten skinnier that is a huge huge success hi sweetheart because hi usually she will drop all her hair and you can see it's really thin over her shoulders she's got a couple bald patches on her back legs but she uh, she will usually drop a lot of condition or weight right after kidding or maybe not right after her babies are seven weeks old six weeks old um, but she will usually drop a lot of hair and she'll drop a lot of weight so but I was assessing her this morning actually and she is still a nice healthy weight I think that she could use a little bit more padding but I think that she's doing great and she's producing a lot of milk she's got triplet bucklings nursing on her during the day and milking in the mornings and she's doing fantastic now we got to find some of these other goats now this is the wooded area that we gave to the goats not that long ago and they have completely cleared as high as they can reach throughout this entire pasture. We really were disappointed it didn't last longer, but they have been really happy with it. Hi, Clover. Hello, darling. Where's the rest of the herd? Oh, here they come. Hey, ladies. Hi. Well, I didn't mean to call you all in. Yeah? Hello. <laughs> Hi, babies. Here's Lincoln and Amelia. These two are Betsy's. There's one more. Betsy also had triplets. Hi, Lincoln. Abraham! Oh, oh, there's that little boy. Hi, Abraham! There's the tiny goat. Hi, 
Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. So Betsy also had triplets this year, and uh, they're doing good. She had two boys and a girl, and uh, so their names are Lincoln and Abraham and Amelia. Uh, Amelia's full name is Amelia Earhart. And they're doing great. We have had to supplement them just because Betsy struggled a little bit with production. Uh, she struggles to feed triplets, and so we just kind of pick one and you primarily bottle feed it, but we still leave the babies with her because she will take care of them. And uh, I really prefer that she does the, the cleaning of the booties. So, um, but she's got triplets. She did have a really hard time a few weeks ago. She ended up getting milk fever. Now, milk fever is a calcium deficiency basically in dairy animals. Uh, it's very common in dairy animals specifically uh, because they have been bred to produce so much milk that sometimes that actually overrides their uh, their instinct to keep themselves going. So basically what happens is that in an effort to make more milk, their body will pull calcium from their body instead of using it out of their diet because they're not maybe getting enough in their diet. And uh, so, Betsy ended up going down with milk fever. Even though she, she's not a heavy producing doe, it's more common in heavier producing animals. But I think that just the, the high demand of the triplets was uh, difficult for her, as well as she's kind of just had a rough time uh, gaining weight. I do believe that a large part of that is because she was refusing to eat the alfalfa pellets in her grain. She uh, she picks around it, she eats around it, and those alfalfa pellets are a very uh, important source of calcium for these goats. Hey Betsy. Hi sweetie. Good news is that Betsy is recovered. She's, uh, she's doing well. She's not producing a whole ton of milk, uh, but her triplets are growing well. We, uh, we give them bottles in the morning. They're growing right on par with the other litter. Um, they are all a little bit smaller, but I mean, Lincoln is the largest of them and he is in the top three of the biggest uh, babies between the two litters. So they're doing fine. It's just, Betsy's just been struggling ever since the move from California. So we're gonna have to have some serious thoughts and serious conversations about what we're gonna do with her moving forward. But I think that this summer is gonna be really focused on getting her condition back. She just is having a hard time putting weight on and that is just, it's not like her. In California, she was almost chunky. So just gotta get that goat to eat. She. Uh, I just mixed a fresh batch of grain yesterday and she's actually eating it now. Hi, Maggie. These goats do not respect personal space. So Nestle is taking the year off because she did not get pregnant. Uh, she never kitted, she never bagged up. I don't think she ever was pregnant. So that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So she's just been enjoying the year as grumpy grandma. So most of our crossbred babies this year uh, are already gone to their new homes. Uh, let's see, Cosmo and Spruce and Miriam all went to the same home. And as you guys know, Loki went to a new home fairly early on. Now I do have three boys left. Uh, Hermes actually has a deposit placed on him. His owners just wanted to wait until he was uh, banded and weaned before he went to his new home. So he's just hanging out here for a little bit longer. And we are still looking for homes for Nightshade and Moses. And they are getting to be quite big. If I can get through the sea of goats, we can go say hi. So now we are down at our boy goat barn. Our adult boys are all mobile now. So 
We use this as our weaning pen. These guys are not actually officially weaned yet. They are still on bottles and they had to be pulled from their moms because they started extending and basically when a goat starts to extend that means that he is able and capable of breeding. And I have two yearling Nigerian dwarf does up there and I do not need them bred this time of year. So we went ahead and brought these guys over here. They're getting all huge. They're actually gonna be banded this weekend. So they will be weathered and then they'll go to their new homes. But hey, Hermes, <laughs> I'm handsome. Hey buddy. Nightshade. Hi, handsome. It's quite the hairdo you got going. Hey, Moses. He's hanging out in the shade today. Hey, Mufasa. How you doing, bud? So, yes, we do still also have Mufasa, our purebred French Alpine buckling. He is in the weaning pen because he is actually weaning. Uh, he just reached that age and that uh, development point with uh, being able to extend. So he came out here to join the other boys and he's doing great. Uh, he does have some pretty ugly looking horns due to a failed disbudding. And I really wish that it had turned out better, but I learned a lot. Uh, he was my first full size goat that I have ever disbudded. So I feel pretty confident moving forward and uh, I think that we probably shouldn't have any more issues. I know that things are kind of flying quick here with names and trying to keep everybody uh, updated, but what we're gonna do is soon I'm going to do kind of a roll call video that's gonna have all of our animals with their names so that we can kind of keep track of who is who and how many animals we actually have on the farm here. Granted, that number fluctuates quite a bit when you have predators uh, and you have birds. Birds are hard to keep track of just because you do have a fairly large number of them and they don't all go in the coop at night because some of our guineas have decided that they just don't go in the coop anymore. So they roost in the high rafters of the barn and things like that. So, so keeping a track record on birds can be challenging. Now as for our boy goats, we, uh, we've made them fully mobile now. So this is their new pen which is actually our old pig pen. Uh, way back when we had our feeder pigs last year, uh, we had Baconia, Loane, and Sausage. They were in this pen uh, as their final pen. And so we decided to actually put the goats in here to help clear this tree line. And there's an access road back here that we are having them clear. Really guys? You got all this space and that's where you poop. Now it's wet because it rained, but poop, really? Hello. Hi guys. Hi Teddy. Now one bittersweet little update here with the boys is that two of our weathers are going to be leaving us. Hello gentlemen. Um, we have decided to kind of focus more on our breeding goats John's gonna chew my arm. Uh, so we have decided to focus more on the breeding goats. And that means that our two Nigerian weathers, uh, Obi and Teddy, are going to be leaving us actually tomorrow. What are you doing, sir? He wants to rub his head on everything. So Obi and Teddy are gonna be leaving tomorrow for their new home. And she's really excited. Uh, I've been in contact with their buyer for a while now as she's been preparing a space for them. And so they're going to a great home and uh, actually she is also going to be taking three of our little Nigerian bucklings when those guys get older. So I think that it's going to be great for them. They get to live out their lives as pets and uh, yeah, they'll be missed. It's, it's bittersweet, it's hard to say goodbye, but sometimes you just have to make management decisions and it's just, it's hard to justify feeding them through the winter when they really don't serve much purpose here. Um, because if I need a brush goats, I have 
breeding stock goats that I can put in a brush area to clear. So Teddy and Obi, we wish them the best of luck and uh, they're gonna be super happy in their new home. So that's it for our little goat update. Now we're gonna move on to a sheep update. Uh, so last you guys knew, we had four uh, feeder ram lambs. And I had mentioned that we did have one sick lamb in one of the videos, kind of as a passing thing. And unfortunately that lamb was a Miko and he did not make it. We are not really sure exactly what was going on with him, but he went downhill. I kept him going for a couple of days, but he started having seizures. And so that was when we decided to go ahead and make the call and uh, let him go. So that was difficult. Um, it was the first uh, kind of larger animal that we've really lost. I'm not gonna say it's easier to put down something like a chicken, but it is more difficult to put down a cute fuzzy little lamb. It really is. And uh, so that was really tough. David did it and it was hard on him. Uh, but the other three are doing great. They're actually not here. <laughs> uh, a friend of ours down the street has some lambs as well and they just were not able to keep up with the grass growing in her yard so she asked if she could borrow our dudes so they're hanging out over there uh, just getting fat and happy off of our neighbor's grass and we also had two bottle ewe lambs and uh, they were doing great um, unfortunately a couple weeks ago we did lose one of them we lost little Rachel to bloat uh, it was really hard it was really sudden it took her really fast and um that was really hard because audrey was there when it happened and that was her favorite lamb so that was very traumatic and so we did lose her but uh before we even got those lambs um i had actually rescued a lamb uh for a friend of a friend and uh, they called me out and um, basically we brought back this lamb from what looked like death. And uh, I ended up giving her the name Xena, Warrior Princess. And the owners kept that name and they bottle raised her. And when, um, when she got a little older, we, we stayed in contact and I had actually worked out a trade with the owner to get some adult ewes uh, in exchange for some help with his flock of sheep. So he was gonna give me three ewes and when uh, we lost Rachel, I called him up and I asked him if he would be willing to let Zena go to be a friend for Rachel's sister, Ruth. And he said, yes, as long as we promise never to eat her. And we weren't planning on it. So uh, we now have Zena and Ruth and I have three adult ewes and you might notice that there's something else in this pasture with the sheep. Hello ladies. So the sheep here are Esther and Leah and this sheep actually also already had the name of Rachel so it really felt very full circle that our Rachel had facial freckles and the new Rachel also has freckles. So we kept her name as Rachel. Now that thing is Allie. Hi Allie. Hi sweet girl. Hello. Oh yes, you're a good girl. Now Allie is our newest member here at Welcome Grow Homestead. She's only been here for a handful of days and but she is experienced and she is just an absolute sweetheart huh baby she uh she has become our new sheep dog basically she is a great pyrenees and she has these darker ears this is just called a badger marking um she's super sweet and she uh she is here to protect our sheep because we do have two guardian dogs already but we already had jobs for them and I needed a dog that was going to live with our sheep. So that is Miss Allie's job. She protects the sheep. Now over here are Zena and Ruth. Zena is actually 11 days older than Ruth, 
but she Man. is significantly smaller. Xena no. was raised on milk replacer, while Ruth was mm -hmm. raised on milk. She got uh, Jersey cow milk for a while, and then was switched to goat milk toward the end. Oh dear. Hello, darling. She still really, really wants bottles, but she doesn't get them anymore. But she'll, that doesn't stop her from trying. Hey, Ruth. And then little Xena. Hey, Xena. The loss of Rachel was definitely uh, soothed for Audrey by getting little Xena. She has been in love with this lamb since before she ever even met her. She just loved the story of how I went and saved this lamb. Uh, she was hypothermic when I got there. She was basically lifeless and it took a long time to get her warmed up. And uh, now she's a thriving, happy, healthy little lamb. So Audrey was uh, really thrilled that we were bringing Xena home. So one thing that is happening currently is that it's time to cut the hay again. So we are actually, well we, I say we, when I really mean David. David is out with the tractor and he is out doing our first cutting of hay for the year. Of course, now I'm wandering around the property looking for him, but he is on the tractor mowing fields somewhere. <laughs> Just gotta figure out which field he's on. But uh, we're walking past my parents' house here and they moved into their house, which means they are no longer living at my house. And uh, they're still getting things settled, but uh, they're really happy to be in their own space and get their own things out of storage. We also just recently celebrated our first year anniversary of being here. Cannot believe how fast the year went. It is just crazy how fast time goes when you are so busy every day. Oh, we must be getting closer. Hey, look who found him. For those of you who may not know, or in fact may not remember since it's been so long since we posted, David has a day job. He works Monday to Friday, and so he is only available in the evenings and on the weekends. And uh, it's haying season, so he's out here in growing darkness mowing. And uh, he's gonna have to just work on it as he can. We're also extremely blessed by Randy, our neighbor, and also the seller of this property. Uh, he has the haying equipment. Uh, we do own the mower, but he has the tedder, the rake, the baler. He has all the other things that are really necessary to make hay. So he has very graciously been taking David under his wing and teaching him how to hay and uh, letting us use his equipment. He is, he's just very excited that we have decided to continue farming this property and he has just really wanted to pass down his knowledge of how to do these things on this property. Oh, they're coming by. I know this video is a little rocky, a little shaky, a uh, little rushed. Uh, there's just so much that has been going on that we've got to fill you guys in on. And I'll be honest, I'm a little rusty. And uh, I think that we're just gonna have to break it down and do other updates in other videos because there's just so much to absorb. It's, and honestly, there's just so much to inform you guys on that I'm probably gonna forget something. But anyway. Thank you so much for joining us and your patience as we've been going through this crazy busy time and unable to really stay on top of our videos. Just, we really appreciate all of your kind wishes, uh, messages that have gone out to me, uh, wondering where we are and if we're okay. Uh, we're doing great, we're just busy, and I just, something had to give on my end. and. It's unfortunate for you guys and for us because we have absolutely loved getting your comments and uh, 
your feedback and getting to share all of this with you guys but it just when you reach a point that you have to let something go to succeed in other areas that's kind of just what we had to do for a period so we're hoping to pick back up here get back in the swing of doing regular content and uh, go from there so thank you so much for joining us as always this is your country nerd with a goat herd saying that you can grow where you're planted.